بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلاة الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah This is a ni'mah that is tremendous indeed and is one that we have to constantly thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for because being guided to al-Islam it saves us from the false religions and being guided to the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then it saves us from the deviated paths this is a ni'mah that is tremendous bila shak wa bila rayb alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has allowed us to reach this day and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to see another Ramadan and to benefit from the fasting of another Ramadan and to benefit from the standing in the night and to benefit from giving sadaqah therein and to benefit a woman from the righteousness uh, therein and that he fortify us up and make us steadfast upon righteousness uh, and that he accepts from us our deeds and make us from those who are granted pardon and who are forgiven and have their sins forgiven throughout the coming month of Ramadan and those who die upon Islam and who meet him while he is pleased with us and that he admit us into Jannah to Firdaus. Allahumma Ameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in His noble book as relates to fasting, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O you who believe. When we hear this address, then we should open our ears because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is directing His speech and speaking to those who believe, those who have faith. Allah Ta'ala, He says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامِ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Oh, you who believe, 
fasting has been written upon you, prescribed upon you, as it was prescribed upon those who came before you, in order for you to attain piety. In order for you to attain piety, to attain taqwa. Fasting, as we know, is from the deen of Al Islam. As we see here in this ayah, and also as it comes in the, in the hadith, the famous hadith, the hadith of Jibreel, where Jibreel, alayhi salatu was salam, he asked the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said unto him, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni an al Islam. O Muhammad, inform me about Islam. And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he informed him that Islam is to testify by witness that none has the right to be worshipped the truth except Allah and to establish the prayer, pay the zakat, fast in a month of Ramadan and make hajj to the house for those who have the ability to do so. So here in this hadith we see the clear evidence that fasting is from Islam. That fasting is from the deen of Islam. Naam. And that is clear from the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This hadith, it can be found in the 40 hadith of Imam and Nawawi. It can be found in the 40 hadith of Imam and Nawawi. Naam. And it's the second hadith therein. We mentioned that this hadith of uh, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, it is also the first hadith in Sahih Muslim. And it's called Umm Sunnah. Naam, it's called Umm Sunnah. Ala kulli hal shahid is that when Jibreel, he said, Ya Muhammad, akhbirni an al Islam, O Muhammad, inform me about Islam. The Prophet وسلم, he mentioned to him the aspects of Islam is essential aspects. Naam, as he said, and tashhada an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah wa tuqim al salah wa tuti al zakah wa tusum al ramadan wa tahuj al bayt in istata'ta ilayhi sabila to testify that none has the right to worship the truth except Allah. And that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah to establish the prayer, to pay the zakat, to fast in the month of Ramadan, and to make hajj to the house if you are able to do it, if you are capable of doing it. Then after that, Imam al nawawi he brings as the third hadith, the hadith of Ibn Umar as well radiyallahu ta'ala anhu naam he brings the hadith of Ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu naam hadith in Jibreel actually Abdullah ibn Umar he narrated upon his father Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Naam, he narrated upon his father Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Naam. Whereas the hadith that comes third is the hadith that is narrated on the authority of Ibn Umar. And this is the hadith, Buni al Islam ala khams. That Islam is built upon five. Naam, that Islam, it is built upon five. And then they mention therein the five pillars of Islam. So a person they may ask, why was the hadith that Jibreel mentioned, and it mentions the five pillars of Islam. And then after that, there comes the hadith, Buni al Islam ala khams, that Islam is built upon five. Why were they both mentioned like this? Because a person may, may think that there is some redundancy, because this was already mentioned. However, when you closely examine, you see that the mentioning of the hadith of Ibn Umar, after mentioning the hadith that is narrated on his father Umar, what is called Hadith Jibreel, it is actually a completion. Why? Because in the Hadith of Jibreel, it's established that these five pillars are from Islam. Naam, that these five pillars are essential aspects of Islam. But there's no dalil here 
that these are the five pillars of Islam. There's no dalil that these are the five pillars of Islam. Whereas in the third hadith, in the hadith of Ibn Umar, عنه, it establishes the fact that these five are the pillars of Islam. So it says, Buni al Islam ala khams. That Islam is built upon five. That Islam, it is built upon five. Naam. And then uh, there comes these, uh, uh, yani, the five pillars of Islam. So the fact that fasting is from the deen of Islam is undoubtedly. It's undoubtedly the fact. Naam. There's no, there's no doubt. Bila shak bila right. Fasting is from the deen of Islam. It is from the pillars of Islam and is wajib. Is wajib that everyone understands and knows this. Yani bil darura. Every Muslim knows and has to know that fasting is an essential component and aspect of the deen of an Islam. Now, the fasting that is made obligatory upon us, the fasting that is made obligatory upon us is the fasting that comes in the month of Ramadan. It's fasting that comes in the month of Ramadan. Now, there are many lectures and classes where we go over, as we're going to Bithnilahi Ta'ala shortly, what is the meaning of fasting? What does it mean? Al-Siyam, uh, the definition of Al-Siyam, Lughatan, Wa Shara'an, and the language also in the um, uh, legislation, what's the meaning in the legislation, right? As, as well as what is the meaning in the language. However, a lot of times we don't really get into what is the meaning of Ramadan. What does Ramadan mean? Naam, what does Ramadan mean? So inshallah ta'ala, we would like to start this by going into what is the meaning of Ramadan. Naam, because I think it's important for us to know. Because a person, they may come and they may ask you, what does Ramadan mean? Naam, and most people they'll say, Allahu A'lam, I don't know, it's the name of the month. <laughs> Naam. But inshallah ta'ala, there's some benefits. There's some benefit in knowing what is the meaning of Ramadan. Naam. So you have difference of opinion amongst the ulama as relates to what is the meaning of Ramadan. Naam. Some of the ulama, they say Ramadan huwa alamun mujarradun. Alamun mujarradun. Dalla ala musamma. That Ramadan is just a name that is just a, is just a, is just purely a name that points to that which has been named after it. That's it. It is just it's just a name and it points to that which it has been that which has been named after it, and then that's it. Now, meaning what? That there's no yeah, I mean, it's just the name of the month. There's no real significance to the name. So some of them they come with this uh, opinion that it's just a name. It's just a name that points to that which is named after it. That's it. Very simple. Right? You have others from the ulama, they mention, right? Because there's a, there's a reason, yani, because uh, Ramadan, yeah, it, 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 it stems from a word that has a meaning. Or, yani, it has a meaning. And there are words that stem from it that contain a meaning. Naam? So, some of the ulama, they say, Sumiya Ramadan, لِأَنَّهُ كَانَ فِي وَقْتِ شَدِيدِ الْحَرْ Ma'am, that it's been called Ramadan because it took place at a time of extreme heat. It took place at a time when, when it was extremely hot. Ma'am, and this is why it's called Ramadan, right? Not just because it took place at a time that was extremely hot, but because also what? تَرْمَضُوا فِيهِ nufus مِنْ شِدَّةِ الْعَطَشِ That it was extremely hot and therefore the people Yani uh, and nufus, the souls, meaning the people, right? The people, they became extremely heated 
they, they became hot, extremely hot. And uh, 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 yani inside of their diaphragm or what have you, became hot due to extreme thirst. Due to extreme thirst. That, they be, that it was hot and their, their temperature, it rose and they became hot and overheated due to extreme thirst because of the, the, the hot uh, 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 climate. So this is why the month was referred to as Ramadan, right? As, as a Ramadan, because at that time it was you know, hot, really hot. That makes sense? Huh? But, and this is because the uh, Ramadan, then this means and it points to something heating up. Ramadan, now it's something heating up. So for example, if you said Ramadan yom, right? Ramadan yom, it means ishtadda harruhu. If you said that Ramadan yom, it means that the heat intensified on this day. The heat this day, the temperature this day, it intensified. It got very, very hot on this day. Ma'am? Khayr. Also, you can say, and this would bring us, bidnillahi ta'ala, to the next meaning that the ulama they mentioned, is that they say, if you were to say, Ramadan, that the fasting person, Ramadan, he yani, got really hot. This means what? It means harrajawfuhu min shiddatil atash. It means that his inside, his 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 his, his diaphragm, his stomach, became extremely hot because of extreme thirst. Became hot because of extreme thirst. So his body temperature it rose because of what? Extreme thirst. Now. Because when a person is suffering from heat stroke, their body temperature, it rises to dangerous levels. So from the treatment of a person that has heat stroke, is that you hydrate them, right? The body temperature rises, the thirst increases, right? They become dehydrated, right? And this, this could be deadly. So what happens is in treating it, you cool the person down and you hydrate the person. Why? Because the body temperature, it rises to levels that can be dangerous and it dehydrates. So extreme thirst is linked to the raising of the body temperature, right? That makes sense? But, so now it brings us to the, the next meaning of what the Ramadan say it means. They say, Wahua, the meaning Ramadan, it's been called Ramadan, Wahua min Ramadu Jawf al-Sa'im, la'an al-Jawf al-Sa'im min al-Imsaq, Ramadan. تصيبه الحرارة فتسمى رمضان من هذا نعم is that the fasting is been called Ramadan because the in the 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 stomach and the, the yani the stomach area and the insides of the fasting person increases the stomach and the fasting, uh, the, I mean the stomach area and the diaphragm of the fasting person, it increases, Shaif, uh, due to what? Due to them fasting. And therefore, they experience a raise in temperature. They experience a raise in temperature. And for this reason, it has been called Ramadan. And for this reason, it has been called Ramadan. Naam? Also, the ulama they mention. Also, the ulama they mention, it has been called Ramadan. In the Ramadan, the Ramadan, be anhu yahrib al-dhunub. For Ramadan, the Ramadan, kafara ma bi'nahuma mashtunibat al-kabair. He said it has been called Ramadan because it burns away the evil deeds. Because from Ramadan to Ramadan is an expiation of the sins that take place between it as long as the major sins are avoided. As long as the major sins are avoided. As it comes in the hadith, 
the hadith of 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 of, uh, of Abu Huraira, radiyallahu taala anhu, قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الصلوات الخمس والجمعة إلى الجمعة من رمضان إلى رمضان مكفرات لما بينهن إذا إذا اجتنبت الكبائر رواه مسلم that the five daily prayers and from Jumu'a to Jumu'a and from Ramadan to Ramadan then it is an expiation of the sins that has taken place between it right as long as the major sins are avoided as long as the major sins are avoided so it's been called Ramadan because it burns away the sins burns away the sins Naam. When you look at all of these definitions that uh, stem uh, uh, from uh, what Ramadan it means and the connection to the fi'l, Ramadan, to heat up, to, for the heat to intensify, and so on and so forth, uh, and that which is connected to it from what physically uh, happens in hot weather to one who is fasting, uh, to the fact that the fasting it burns off the sins, you see that you can easily draw harmony between these definitions and we also get a little bit more about the significance of Ramadan and why it's been called Ramadan and yani, subhanallah uh, it gives us some more indication of the great opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives us in this month of Ramadan to get the sins off of us, to burn away the sins, so on and so forth. It's a great opportunity as it comes in the hadith of Abu Huraira, hadith of Mutafiqun alayhi where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Man Ramadan iman and wahti saban, ghufir lahu ma taqaddam min dhambi. That whoever fasts Ramadan out of iman, true faith, and anticipation of the reward, then his previous sins will be forgiven, or her previous sins will be forgiven. Naam. So it's a great opportunity for us. So now it brings us to that the fact of siyam. Tayyip, ma hu siyam? What is siyam? What is fasting? Lughatan, in the language, and it's always good to know what is the meaning of something in the language and what is the meaning of something in, in the legislation. Because you, you will see a connection there, right? The meaning of 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 uh, of Suyam Lughatan, then it means Mujarrad Mujarradul Imsak. It means you need to purely to withhold from something. That you withhold from something. Naam. So in the Lugha. If a person is, is withholding from something, then you can say that that, that person is saw him. Saw him. Now, no matter what he's withholding from, you say a saw him. Now, and we see this from the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, as it comes in Surah Maryam, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions to us the statement, Inni nadhartu lil-Rahman Soma, that verily I have made an oath, a promise to Ar Rahman, a promise to the Most Merciful, Soma, that I will fast. But does it mean here fasting as withholding from food and drink and the like? No. It means withholding from speech. Withholding from speech. To the oath that she wasn't going to say anything. Naam, that I'm withholding from speech. Right? So that's so in the language that can be called what? So fasting because it, it means to to withhold from something right so when we see that now we start to see the connection why fasting has been called fasting in the language because we're withholding from what from food and from drinking so on and so forth now so in the in the legislation a siyam shara'an in the legislation huwa ta'abud lillah bitark Listen, it is ta'abbut, it is worship unto Allah by leaving al-mufaqqirat min tulu' al-fajr al-thani al ghurub al-shams. It is to stay away from those things that will invalidate the fast from the second fajr. Right? What is, what is the second fajr? What is that? Ah. Nah, but what is, so, so if it's a second fajr, so that means it has to be preceded by a first fajr. Right? Okay, so what's the first fajr? <laughs> it's the false fajr, right? Because it, it is meaning, it is that fajr before the real fajr. Give you indication, get up, eat suhoor, get ready, fajr soon. 
right? So the two of those were called. Naam, one by Bilal and one by Ibn, Ibn Umm Maktoum. Naam. Naam. Because one Fajr lets you know it's getting close. The real Fajr, the second Fajr, because Fajr actually came in. So what it means that when Fajr come in, the real Fajr, when the Fajr come in, then at that point, we have to withhold from eating, from drinking, from intercourse with the spouse, uh, so on and so forth. But the shahid or what's important is that it's what? It's ta'abudan. Ta'abudan lillah. Worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shana Uthaymeen, rahimullah ta'ala, he says that this verbiage to say worshipping Allah, right? That it is worshipping Allah by leaving alone and leaving off the things that are, that will invalidate the fast is actually better. Awla min qawli ba'dihim binniya. He said it is more accurate than the statement of some of them that they mention with the intention of. With the intention of. And he said, why? He said, لِأَنَّ مَنْ أَمْسَكَ تَعَبُّدًا لِلَّهِ فَقَدْ نَوَى وَزَادَ أَنَّهُ أَرَادَ بِهِ تَعَبُّدًا دُونَ مُجَرَّدِ الْإِمْسَاكِ Is because when you say that you are worshipping Allah by withholding from these things, it's superior to saying that you have the intention to withhold from these things. Why? Because you add more information by saying worshipping Allah by withholding from. As opposed to saying having the intention to withhold from. Because if you were to say to have the intention to withhold from, you still would have to add worshipping Allah by way of it. But if you just said worshipping Allah by withholding from, you don't have to mention intention because it's clear your intention is to worship Allah by staying away from. So by saying worshiping Allah, by staying away from, you don't have to mention the word intention because it's understood that that was your intention. That, that makes sense? That makes sense? So it's more complete. And you see, Shaykh Uthameen, rahimullah ta'ala, he used to do this a lot. He would take certain well-known definitions, right? Um, of, uh, 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 if we say well-known, it's not to say that he would come with a definition that was never said before. No, no, he would bring definitions that were said previous, right? But he would point out that there are certain definitions and certain verbiage and certain phrases and certain wordings that are superior to others. That are superior to others. And then he will explain why. Now, that they were more accurate actually in what they were trying to get across and trying to express than other expressions. And this is here just an example, but that by saying worshiping Allah by way of it, then this is better than saying with the intention of staying away from. Now, with the, uh, that makes sense? But, <laughs> now, that's a very important um, aspect because uh, as Shaykh Sulaiman al rahimi uh, he mentions that if a person brings imsak, if he, if he withholds from food and drinking and so on and so forth, but it's not ta'abudan, it is not worshipping Allah Ta'ala by way of it, then it don't count and, it's, and it cannot be called fasting in the legislation. It cannot be called fasting in the legislation. Although it may meet the definition of fasting in the language, is not considered fasting in the legislation because it has to be ta'abudan. It has to be worshiping Allah Ta'ala by way of it. So if a person, let me, let me ask you. So if a person, he became in the habit or she became in the habit of fasting every month of Ramadan, it was habitual. It was a habit. They thought it was part of their culture. Huh? That's just what they do. It's from their norm. Would that count? Would that be called fasting? Legislatively? No. Because the intention is not to worship Allah by it. It's out of habit. It's out of habit. Now, it's out of a person thinking it's cultural. That's what we do culturally. No, it's worshiping Allah to Allah by way of it. Right? Because listen, and it, and, it, and it shows you because there's a big connection. You have people who they don't understand correctly and the shaitan, he plays with them. So when, when Ramadan comes, they fast, right? Because uh, they, they, they feel as if you, you have to fast. It's Ramadan, you have to fast. Everyone fasting, you have to fast. You, you look like the odd man out if you don't fast, so you fast. But at but the same time, they don't pray. So then you have to ask them, then why are you fasting then? 
You can't say because it's ibadah, because if fasting is ibadah, you gotta do it in Ramadan, right? Then prayer is ibadah, you gotta do it all the time. Whether it's Ramadan, outside Ramadan, you gotta pray all the time. So why do you fast and you don't pray? If your intention is, is ibadah. If, if, if you're looking for the ibadah, and that's what your goal is, then you have to pray, that's ibadah all the time. And then you have to fast, that's ibadah's wedge. So if it's about ibadah, then how you fast and don't pray? You see? Which shows you that what? That there is khalal, there is some misunderstandings out there, and people they don't understand correctly. So they're fasting, and they might not even know why they're fasting. Just, just because. Everybody else is. That's sufficient? No, it has to be ta'abudan, that you worship Allah by way of it. So if you go back to the hadith, we see that. Man sama Ramadan imanan. Whoever fasts Ramadan out of faith. Huh? Imanan wahtisaban. They fast Ramadan out of faith. Wahtisab a talib al ajr. Talib al ajr min Allah. That they seek the reward from Allah. Naam? So it's not just where, where yani, you know, we just fast in the fast. No, we fast and we want the reward from Allah. We're fasting out of Iman. Because Allah has mandated, has obligated upon us to fast. So we fast out of Iman and we anticipate the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, we want the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, but this is very important. And the time frame in which we fast is a time frame that is well known. That we fast and we withhold an imsak from things that are well known in a time frame that is well known. And the time frame that is well known is as the Shaykh mentioned, من طلوع الفجر إلى غروب الشمس From Fajr, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. Now from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun. From Fajr to Maghrib, we fast. Once Maghrib comes, the sun set, break our fast. Right? Right. And what's, and what's the Dalil? What meant Dalil? The Dalil is Allah Ta'ala's statement as it comes in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah Ta'ala says, until it is distinct for you the white thread of the day from the black thread, meaning of the night, yani of, of Fajr. Right? Meaning, once the day breaks, Allah Ta'ala says, Then complete the fast until night. Then complete the fast until the night time. Naam? That makes sense? That makes sense? But that's as relates to uh, fasting, the meaning of it, and the language, and inside of the legislation. Naam. But now, here's the question. Here's the question. And these are things, yeah, and, and, and you know what? Subhanallah. This is one of those. This is one of those times where we really realize that we have to pay attention and, and focus on things that benefit us. You know what I mean? A lot of stuff that goes on, it really doesn't benefit us when they're very um, uh, rudimentary things that we are still lacking in. We find that you know, this other stuff, it don't benefit us. You understand? And we have to, we have to uh, learn how to tune out the noise and the nonsense, right? Tune out the noise, tune out the nonsense, and focus on what benefits you. You understand? Fitna, you know, we come from, in the West, people like Fitna, they like the soap opera type stuff, who said what, when, about who, and what the response was, and all this type of stuff. You know, when the truth has to be explained, then the truth is clarified and it's explained. And then what? You keep it moving. But I got time to be arguing with foolish people all the time, because foolish is fools is fools, and that's that. They, they're going to argue with you, because they're going to argue with you, and they're going to continue to argue with you, because they're fools. That's what fools do. But then you but then you waste your time with the fool, and then what happens is, Certain simple things about your religion you don't know. Certain simple things about your religion you don't know. Now it's Ramadan. You know about the rules of Ramadan? I don't know. Why? Why I don't know? Because you've been wasting all your time arguing with the fool. Oh, Rajab, oh, Shaban, now Ramadan, so I don't lie. You caught slipping because you waste your time with the fool. Let the fool say what he want. Let the fool tweet what he want. Let him write on Twitter what he want. Let him go in front of a hotel room and say what he want. And the people right in the hotel gathering, what I, let him say what he want. Who cares? Ain't true, so who cares? Right? But, but here's where it, 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 it highlights. Check this out. When was the fast of Ramadan made obligatory? 
When was the fast of Ramadan made obligatory? These are certain rudimentary questions. Very simple questions, elementary questions, right? Because we know we got to fast on Ramadan, but what year was it made obligatory to fast on Ramadan? Yeah, huh? Right, I'm saying, but these are things that we should know. These, these, these are type of things that we should be spending our time with, really learning about our religion, really learning about our religion, right? But so the Sheikh he mentioned, Sheikh Tamim, Rahimullah Taala, he mentioned. He says, "For it on Ramadan." في السنة الثانية من الهجرة that Ramadan it was made obligatory or يعني uh, نعم it was made obligatory the second year the second year of هجرة على هذه الأمة كما شرع على الأمم السابقة just as it was written upon the previous nations it was written upon this nation in the second year year, year number two year number two هجرية نعم just as it was written upon the previous nations. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مِلَّةِ إِسْلَامِيَّةِ فُورِضَ فِيهَا الصوم. Because every Islamic nation, and when the Shaykh means Islamic nation, is he talking about different countries? Huh? He talking about different countries? Kuwait, Egypt, UAE, Saudi, Pakistan, Indonesia, Malaysia, huh? Is he, that's what he means? No, he means nations in general, all the previous nations of Muslims from who followed the previous prophets. Who followed the previous prophets. So every nation of believers that was ever on earth, all of them, it was written upon them to fast. What's the proof? Huh? What's the proof? It's the verse we just heard a little while ago. From Surah Al Baqarah. Naam, Ahsan. That fasting has been made obligatory upon you as it was made obligatory upon those who came before you so that you maintain piety. Surah Al Baqarah, verse 183. Now, here's another question. How many Ramadanat? How in, in Ramadanat? That's the plural of Ramadan. Right? That's the plural of Ramadan. English we say Ramadans and put an S after the after the uh, the end, right? But that's that's the Englishization of the word. In Englishization. I don't know if that's even a word, but whatever. That's the, making the word English. <laughs> don't get me making up words, right? <laughs> the, you know, the making the word English, whatever. We say Ramadans, but in Arabic it's Ramadanat. So here's a question: How many Ramadanats did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fast? Ah, you see what I'm saying? This is stuff that we need. This is the good stuff. This stuff right here is more beneficial than who tweeted what about who when, right? This is more beneficial than, you know, who put something where about whatever. You know what I mean? But how many Ramadans, that's the English word version, right? How many Ramadanat did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he fast? And Shikr al Allah Ta'ala, he says, Well, Sama Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Tis'a Ramadanat Faqat That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He fasted Nine Ramadans Nine Nine Ramadans Right? Nine Ramadanat Nine Ramadans But in Arabic is What was the plural? Ramadanat Now <laughs> Now But لَأَنَّهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ تُوَفِّيَ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَسَلَّمْ فِي سَنَةً and had the Ashra min Hijrah because the Prophet Sallallahu he died in the eleventh year. That was another question I could have asked. I blew in the answer already, right? <laughs> because the Prophet Sallallahu he died in the eleventh year of Hijrah. So it legislated in year number what? No, no, year number two. And the Prophet Sallallahu he died in year eleven. So between that's how many? Eleven minus two. Nine. Nine years. Now, so the Prophet said, so he fasted nine Ramadanat. Nine Ramadans. Right? But, uh, he did, Sama Tisa Ramadanat. He fasted nine Ramadanat. What Kafiyatu and Farud, and Farud, and the way in, in which it was made obligatory, uh, was in stages. Now, 
The way it was made obligatory was in stages. And in Charlotte Tower, we're going to come to see the wisdom of why it came in stages, right? Because the first of the affair, in the first of the affair, fasting in Ramadan, it was Amr ala tukhayyir, aw tukhayyir. It was an affair that there was a choice in it, right? He was given a choice, right? Allah Ta'ala, he says, وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِقُونَهُ فِدْيَةُ طُعَامُ الْمِسْكِينَ uh, نعم. Allah Ta'ala He says in Surah Al-Baqarah And it's verse 183 In Surah Al-Baqarah Allah Azza wa Jal No, no, it's 184, excuse me, it's, surah, uh, it's, it's, it's verse 184 from Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah Ta'ala, He mentions, um, and for those who can fast with, uh, with difficulty, naam, those who can fast, they could fast, but there's some mashaqqa, there's some difficulty upon them, then they have the option to feed for every day in its stead a poor person. Now, so they had the option for those who were able to fast, but they found some slight difficulty in fasting. As most people who are able to fast, they find some kind of difficulty in it, some thirst, some you know headache, maybe sometime, right? So it's some difficulty. Now, so for those, they were able to feed a poor person instead of fasting. They had the option, either you fast or you feed a poor person, right? But to fast was was better for them. And we can see this in Allah Ta'ala's statement, وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ and, it, and if you fast, that's better for you. It's better for you to fast. Now, this was how it was in the beginning of the affair. وَهَذِهِ الْآيَةِ وَاضِحَةِ This verse is clear. بِالتَّخْيِيرِ is clear given the option. Now I'm given an option to either fast or to feed a person instead of fasting. Now I'm, this is how it was in the beginning, in the beginning of the fair. To feed a poor person for every day you were not allowed to, every day that you didn't fast, that you feed a poor person instead of the fasting. Now, I'm, but to fast, it was better. So at first it was like this. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he took away, he took away the option. He took away the option, right? And what ayah takes away the option? Because in ayah 183, in ayah 183, right? We see this option. Oh, excuse me, 184. In ayah 184, we see this option. In 184, from Surah Al-Baqarah. We see we have an option. Now, we see we have an option. Right? So when, so which verse removes the option? Who knows? 184 gives us, gave the Muslims an option. Either you fast or you feed a poor person. So which ayah Remove that option. To now, the only option is the fast. For those yani, who are able to. Give you a hint. Chronologic, in chronologic order, 183 informs us that fasting was written upon us as written upon those who came before us. 184 gives the first of the affair, the option to the Muslims to either fast or to feed a person for every day that they didn't fast. Right? So the next part of the story, which verse you think would come in? 185. <laughs> nah, 185. Okay, where in 185? Which part of the which part of the verse tells us that we don't have the option no more? It, it starts 
شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى the month of Ramadan where the Quran was revealed therein a guidance for mankind and clear evidences for the guidance clearly explaining the, the guidance what for Quran and a criteria between right and wrong فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُمْ and whoever for months who sees the month they witness the month they must fast so which part of the verse takes away the option whoever well, cites the crescent then what they must fast there's no option after that. So this verse does what? Abrogated the verse before it. It abrogated the verse before it. Now, so now the option for those who had the ability was taken away. There was no longer option to feed people. Right? There's no longer option to feed people. That makes sense? Huh? The ulama they mentioned that this abrogation was not an abrogation in totality. It was not an abrogation in totality. Why? Because feeding of the people was reserved. It became yani, uh, 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 specified to the old people who didn't have the ability to fast. So for them, instead of fasting, what do they do? They feed people. Or for the person that has a perpetual illness that does not allow them to fast because they're perpetually sick, with an illness that they have no anticipation of being cured from and it prevents them from fasting so for them now they have to feed people now, so the ruling it became lifted from the general sense and now it is specified to a particular portion of the population for those who don't have the ability either due to old age or due to a perpetual sickness now and the early they agree upon these and then you have some of the Urnimaj, you have some of the Salaf, some of the Sahaba. They say also what enters into this is the, the pregnant woman and the woman who is breastfeeding. Also enters into this. Others from the Urnimaj, they say no. That she will make the days up later when she can make the days up because that which is preventing her is temporary and, and it will go away. Ma'am? Others from the ulama, like you have the, uh, those from the Salaf, because uh, yani basically both opinions you have from the Salaf. And, they, and others from then they said, no, no, no. She could feed a person for every day and then she don't have to worry about making up later. Now, ala kulli had, ala kulli had, these are the groups in which uh, that ruling is still remains on, but the general masses, that was that was lifted. Those who have the ability, now they must fast. They have no option but to fast. Now, they have no option but to fast. Those who are sick temporarily or on journey, then they can break their fast while they're sick and on a journey. But then after Ramadan, they have to make those days up because now they owe those days. They have to make those days up uh, when once they are no longer sick and no longer traveling. Now, but Shaykh Uthaymeen, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he mentions the wisdom of why originally it was given an option. The wisdom of why originally it was given an option. And these things are good to know because these are the kind of things that the Kufar they come with with doubt. Right? They, they come in and try to bring doubt around affairs like this. So it's good to know why. Uh, and this shows you yani, the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he deals with his creatures in the most excellent and kind of ways. The most excellent and the kindest way. Shurdi Min, he says, that the wisdom for us, why it originally we had an option for a time, then an the option was removed. He said, Lima fihi min al because of what it contains therein from difficulty. Fakana tahiru munasiba. so therefore, given the option originally, it was appropriate. It was appropriate to give the option originally the tarweed. Now and nufus alay to give the soul's time to acclimate to it. To give the soul's time to acclimate to it. Wahakada in the light. Al Qaida, the principle, Fal Qaida, a Sharia, is that Kullu Shay, Kullu Shay, Yashukwa al Nas, Fairluhu, Al Tarkuhu, Fa in al Qaida Takutawi. And Yushra'a bin Tadrij 
كما شرع تحريم الخمر نعم وكذلك فرض الصلاة Sheikh Uthameenie says so the general principle the principle as relates to the, to, to the like of these affairs is that any command that had therein some type of difficulty in either fulfilling it or that had some type of difficulty in staying away from something then you will find that the principle that is suitable for that is that it was legislated gradually it was legislated gradually the sheikh he says for example the legislation of the pro of, of the prohibition of alcohol now the, the legislation of the prohibition of alcohol it was gradual it wasn't just haram straight from the beginning but it was gradual now and this was due to the amount of drinking that had existed in those ancient societies that it would have been very difficult to just quit as they say cold turkey right so it became gradual gradual now they were uh, uh, discouraged from it and then it became don't do it now likewise also the salah the command for the salah now because the salah originally when the salah was first made obligatory upon us five times a day does anyone know how many raka'at the salah consisted of? No, no, no. After, after it was, it was, it was five. After, after, after it was brought to five prayers a day, right? And and uh, how many raka'at was each prayer? Does anyone know? How many raka'at was each prayer? Because this is another indication of what's the name? Ah. You got two, three, two except for Maghrib. Five. Anybody agree? Huh? <laughs> Nobody's scared. Anybody agree or disagree? Uh, online world, what you say? How many originally? The brother said it was two except for Maghrib. Is he right or wrong? Is he wrong or right? Huh? Let Edri, okay. I, 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 I can take that. Let Edri, this is the eight. Half a knowledge is to say, I don't know, you don't know. That's J. That's good. Huh? Are you trying to Google it? <laughs> <laughs> the, alhamdulillah No, the brother's right Originally, the salah was two raka'at Every salah was two raka'at Except for maghrib Naam So that was originally Because remember If something has in it Any type of difficulty Then its legislation was done gradually it Was done gradually Right So at first Uh, uh Dhuhr and Asr and Isha was just two raka'at. Maghrib was the longest prayer of the day, was three raka'at. Naam. Wait. So uh, the Shaykh he mentions, he says, Yani, as salah kanat raka'atain. Illa, the salah was kanat raka'atain. A raka'atan, two, rak two raka'as, right? That's the English size word or whatever. Englishization. <laughs> Cole Webster. Uh, wait, right? It was it was two rakat except for maghrib, which was three. ثم بعدها حاجر الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. And then after that, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم made hijrah. نعم, he made hijrah. صارت الظهر والعصر والعشاء على أربع ركعات. Then after the hijrah, then after the hijrah, ظهر. And Asr and Isha became four rakah, four rakahat, four rakahat. Now, that makes sense. That makes sense. So originally, they prayed two rakahat, yeah, rakahatan, except for Maghrib. Then the Prophet ﷺ made Hijrah. Then, Dhuhr, Asr, and Isha became four rakahat. 
Maghrib stay three. I miss someone. Fajr. How many rakaat was Fajr? Two. Stayed on his original. <laughs> stayed on his original. Huh? Started two, stayed two. He's the only one that stayed two. Right? Dhuhr, Asr, and Isha got two more added to it and became four. Alakul Hal is because it has it has some level of difficulty therein, so its legislation was gradual. That makes sense? Its legislation, it was gradual. Right? So that's the wisdom of why at first it was optional to fast. Either you fast or you fed the person. And then once the nation, the Muslims, they were acclimated unto it, right? Then that uh, option was removed. And now it became mandatory upon those who had the ability to fast, to fast. It became mandatory upon those who met, met the criteria and conditions of fasting that now is wedged upon them to fast. That makes sense? Right. So now, oh, let's, let's, let's do a little review again. Pop quiz. So what was the part of the verse again that took away the option? Wait, 185, but which part of the verse? Now I'm sent. Whoever cites the crescent, then that you must fast. Right. And that removed the option for who? It removed the option for the old people? No. What what about the person who's sick with a perpetual sickness? He he has the option still? Okay. So who was the option removed for? Those people who are working people in the field and stuff like that. Nah, Hard working, but what they had, they had what they had the ability to do it, they were able to do it, they had the ability. So, for them, it's no longer an option. You have you can do it, but it's not an option no more. The option only became reserved for who for those who can't do it, meaning not that not an option you need to fast, but that now they can feed a person instead of fasting. But why? Because they cannot fast, they cannot fast. That makes sense because they cannot fast now. So for a person who fasting will have an adverse effect on their health, can, can hurt them, I mean, possibly they can die from it, they are not allowed to fast at all. It's not, it's not, it's not permissible for them to fast. They, they have to eat and feed people instead of fasting. They don't have any, yeah, they have to, that's it. Right? The person with perpetual sickness, they have to feed people. Fasting is not an option for them. It's not an option. You know? That makes sense? Okay. So now, in general, what's the wisdom of fasting? What's the wisdom? I'll give you a hint. We went over, we, well, we spoke about three verses. 183, 184, 185. From which surah? Surah to the Baqarah. Surah to the Baqarah, which number of surah in the Quran? Two. Three. The wisdom, the wisdom of the legislation of fasting is contained in one of these three verses. Which part of the verse is the highlighting point that tells us what is the wisdom? Which part of the verse? Nah, I said. You gonna let him answer all the questions? Come on, man. Don't jump in there. I لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ so that, so that you will attain piety. Naam. Shikr Adhimini mentions الْحِكْمَةِ فِي فَرْضِيَّةِ that the wisdom in making fasting obligatory, the fasting of Ramadan obligatory, Naam, is made very clear in the ayah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Oh, you who believe fasting has been made obligatory upon you as it, made obligatory, as it was made obligatory upon those who came before you or fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed on those who came before you in order for you to attain piety. Naam. The hikmah is taqwa. So now, when you look at it from this standpoint that the wisdom for fasting is to attain taqwa. Right? 
So now you see that what? Those people who fast just for the sake of fasting and they don't pray, they're not getting the purpose. They're not getting the point, as they say. You're missing the point. Because the point is to be righteous, is to have taqwa, to have piety. How are you going to be righteous? You don't pray. Now, how are you going to be righteous? You don't pray. The point of it is to what? Is to attain taqwa. That is clear, clear from the ayah. Also clear from the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he said, مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَعَمَنَ بِهِ وَالْجَهَلِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ فِي أَنْ يَدْعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ That whoever does not leave off, whoever does not abandon uh, vain and, 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 and ridiculous, foolish speech, whoever does not leave off foolish speech, and acting in accordance to it, an ignorant behavior, acting ignorantly, then Allah is in no need that they leave off their food and their drink. Why? Because they're missing the point. You're fasting from food and drink. Remember, food and drink outside of Ramadan during the daytime is what? Permissible. So you are leaving off the permissible, right? Acclimating yourself on leaving off the permissible because this trains you and it acclimates you and makes it easier for you to leave off the impermissible. So in Ramadan, you're going to fast away from that which is permissible other times of the year at this time frame, but you're going to indulge in that which is haram all year long, whether it's day or night, it's haram. Can't do it. So you're going to fast on the permissible, but then engage in impermissible. You're missing the point. You're missing the point. The point is tough. Well, the point is to train oneself upon yeah, the, uh, righteous character. So the person who they're still giving into foolish speech and acting in accordance to it, you're missing the point. The person who is still acting in accordance to ignorance, then they're missing the point. They're missing the point. Because the point is to acclimate you upon righteousness. And this is something, inshallah, ta'ala, that yeah, the, people have to remember. Right? They have to remember. This goes all throughout yani, Ramadan. It doesn't mean, like some people think, okay, just when, you know, I'm, I'm going to be good while I'm fasting. Because some people some people understand like this. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You got to stay away from Haram too. But then their mind becomes restricted to this the day of Ramadan. As if the Lord of the day of Ramadan is not the Lord of the night of Ramadan. You have individuals who, in, while they're fasting, they won't smoke cigarettes. Right? Because... And, and deep down inside they know it's wrong But then they make a bar Up when I have a pack of cigarette in front Yeah, they, subhanAllah And they call for the masjid What sense does this make? <laughs> right? Oh, it's night time now I can act a fool No, <laughs> you're missing the point You're missing the point It's not this Oh, I'm not going to listen to music in the daytime But at night time I'll put my, put my headphone in and bop away Yeah, So you're missing the point you're missing the whole point. Because the wisdom of the legislation of fasting is to attain piety. Piety is something that accompanies the pious all year long, all year long, all throughout their life. Nighttime, daytime, daytime, nighttime, pious, inshallah ta'ala. Now, but likewise, the attainment of piety is not restricted to just the month of Ramadan. So you a good person in Ramadan. Ramadan, you a good boy. Uh, soon as Shawwal come, khalas. Now you, now you that little devil again. Now you a menace again. No, it's to acclimate you for what, so you can carry on with those righteous characteristics throughout the rest of the year, all year long. Because the Lord of Ramadan is, is the Lord of Shawwal, the Lord of every month. Right? So you carry on the right just about the year. So Ramadan, it helps acclimate and it helps train you. How many individuals, yeah, I mean, throughout most of the year, they wake up late for Fajr. Most of the year they pray in Fajr, the sun is already up. Right? But now Ramadan come, that joker up for Sahur. He up early for Sahur. Praying Fajr on time. Oh, you can do it in Ramadan because you want to fill your belly. So you show you can what? You can do it all year round. You can do it now. Why you can't do it then? You can do it all year. You got the ability to do it. So Ramadan helped train a person. So now you get up early for Fajr. Now you get up early to make sure you pray Fajr on time. Now, 
Don't be of those individuals who cheat themselves, who get up to eat suhoor and then go back to sleep and miss fajr. So now you weren't more worried about your belly, you're more worried about your gut than you are you know, worshiping your Lord. You're missing the point. You're missing the whole point. So the purpose of Ramadan is what? And the fasting of Ramadan is so that we may attain piety. So we maintain piety. And a person who's still going to act just as foolish in Ramadan as he did before Ramadan, right? Then Allah has no need that they leave off their food and they drink. Why? They're missing the point. This hadith can be found in Sahih Bukhari. So the Sunnah, the Shia Rathamini mentioned, the Sunnah tadullu ala anna al-hikmah al wahida hi taqwa So the Sunnah points to the fact that the only Reason, the only wisdom in fasting the month of Ramadan is what is taqwa, is to attain piety, to attain taqwa. uh, these are all things that are secondary So the shaykh he mentions He says that And that whatever other benefit That may come from yeah, fasting In the month of Ramadan And some of the people they say A person he could remember therein How Allah has blessed him And the bounty of, of, of wealth And uh, that he's made it easy For that individual to get food And to get drink And so on and so forth Right Because the person They start to experience uh, the hunger pains and the pain of others and so on and so forth all of this is secondary these are all secondary uh, wisdoms these are all uh, 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 yani secondary benefits the main benefit from Ramadan is what? taqwa that's the main benefit these other things that come along they're secondary uh, benefits but the main point the main point it's not these things. The main point is not that you understand the pain of the hungry people. The main point is not that you understand yani, you know, the, the bounty that's upon you, uh, that, that you have easy access to food and, and to water uh, yeah, and the like and drink. No, those are secondary points. The main point is taqwa. And if you miss out the point of taqwa, you miss the point. If you got those other points, but you miss the point of taqwa, you miss the point. Now, you miss the point. Inshallah ta'ala. This is just some reminder we wanted to mention uh, linked to Ramadan so that bithnillahi ta'ala we will, can get more out of this Ramadan than every Ramadan before and as an encouragement to increase and to strive hard this Ramadan fa this is yani, what I wanted to, to mention and to remind myself and all of you with. فَنَكْتَفِي بِهَذَا الْقَدَرِ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَجَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا